have settings like these, you can get shots like this. to Camilla and I. I'm Mark Cooper and this is my YouTube channel where we do wildlife photography and equipment reviews and uh, today we're still working on the Sony A1 and I thought today we'd work on settings particularly my bird in flight and wildlife settings for this camera. So if you're a high-end Sony user um, this video could be very useful to you because obviously having just obtained the new A1 it was time to transfer my settings for my very successful A2 shots which were in the previous segment to the A1 and of course this is not an easy process because Sony have changed the menu system and uh, as usual once they change the system you can't just easily transfer one to the other Anyway, watch on because I've done all the hard work for you. I've actually spent the last two days looking at the menu system and getting it ready for birds in flight in particular. And yesterday I actually went out and tried the settings on a couple of occasions. And um, after a couple of glitches, yep, I hopefully I've got a basic starting point of settings for you for an A1 or a high-end Sony camera, A9, A92, A7R4, and indeed the A7S3 even shares this menu. So I suppose you could use that, although that's essentially a video-centric camera, and we're just concentrating on the stills on this particular. So a quick disclaimer here, I'm not a Sony ambassador, and um, all these settings are the settings that I use, and may not suit you at all. But obviously you can tweak my settings in order to make them work for yourself. And indeed, if you've used Sony cameras before, hopefully you'll have a better idea than me. And indeed, if you've got better ideas than me, please let me know in the comments below. Because we're forever learning on this. And I'm not a technical geek. I'm not a computer person. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to explain what I've done. <laughs> Anyway, disclaimer out of the way, let's dive straight in and bring you a bit closer and I'll run through the exterior controls first and then I'll do an in-depth analysis of each page as we go. Ooh, painful. Anyway, if you can stick to the end, I'll show you something else at the end. Don't know what yet, I haven't thought of that. Okay. Anyway, yeah, stick to the end because there'll be a surprise at the end. So here we have the brand new Sony A1, which um, I've set to program the same as my A92. Well, I hope I have. Anyway, first of all, we've got to explain a few of the exterior settings that um, operate the camera. And then we'll dive into the actual menu itself. So the exterior settings on the camera are... First of all, we have usual on-off settings. God, I can cope with that one. And we have the compensation dial. Again, there's a little lock on that, very useful, on the A92 as well. We have the rear dial. You can set the rear dial to operate shutter speed and the front dial to operate aperture, or you can set it the other way around. The choice is yours. We have the wheel that sets the program mode <coughs> that you're in. And uh, on Komodo and I, 
we're always stuck on manual so that's quite obvious you just press that button in there and then on the other side gets more interesting because from the A92 we get an extra high speed version which is this H H plus or something like that. No, no. Oh, it's exciting. So that's the hopefully the 30 frames per second. Okay. And then we also have AFC set, autofocus continuous, and that's most important on Camilla and I. So well, uh, yeah, essentially that's the exterior settings. So set. You may also be interested in how we actually shoot the camera. So um, I will demonstrate that as well because um, on Camilla and I we always operate back button focusing and this means that this AF on button here is our main focus button and this is the button we set coming up for our birds in flight setting. This is currently set at one two thousandth of a second f4 so that uh, we can capture action instantly anything that flies past so we press that button in there while holding that button in we also then release the shutter button when we feel like and uh, we release it very in very short bursts at the moment at 30 frames per second because it's incredible anyway and the other button we set is this button here which is the AEL button and this is then set as an alternative to press in which also focuses in on our perch birds mode which we set to 1 500th of a second in this case f 5.6 and again we hold that button in and when we when we're in locked on focus then we release the shutter button so that's how we uh, essentially operate the camera using the c2 button on the top i can toggle through my focus areas and i've just selected four of the 14 possible this is just to make it easier to communicate between these I can't use all 14 at once and I find 4 too much. Spot, tracking, wide, zone. And it's zone but it's left on for birds in flight. Okay, functions on the back of the camera. We have the display at the moment, clear, histogram, spirit level. I need to know when the horizon is level and there we are that's the easy bit if you can translate it from there those are my in-flight settings at the moment so if you can do everything from here just go ahead don't bother with anything else that's my in-flight setup and that is my perch bird setting so again may not need to go any further you can just look at those and if you fancy the look of my in-flight photo settings that's all you have to do now we'll dive into the back of the camera and um, actually go through how I set the camera inside here in order to get those bird in flight shots what I'll do is go through every page um, so it's quite painful at this point. So we've had the boring bit. Now we're going to have the extra boring bit. And um, yeah, but that's what it's like setting a camera. So firstly, we come in and press the menu button. And this gets me up to speed. An up press on the wheel navigates you through the 52 pages. I thought it was 51 to the start page and all I'm going to do is run through these as they are otherwise we'll be here all day if I explain what every button does um, I could be here till Christmas so I think we'll just go with what's set basically here 
image quality setting. You have to set this up to the image quality you desire. So uh, when you go back on this menu, you have to press the menu button again. Now all this can be done by touch control, but you've got to have pretty small fingers, so bear that in mind. So here we are on page one. So you set your image quality setting as you want it. Then we go JPEG HEIF. I think this is the new TIFF style sort of format. So just ignore the fact it says HEIF. Took me about 10 minutes to get past that. JPEG, 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 image quality, slots one and two. Slot one has the new Tough Express card, type A in it, slot one, and slot two has the old style standard SD card. And uh, I've set it so that it records the same information to both, so I have a backup. JPEG, aspect ratio must be 3.2. Don't set it to, if you want the full 50 megapixels, it has to be that. Because if you set it to 4.3, it changes to 44 million pixels. So leave it at 3.2 for the full 50. There's page one. Next page, don't do anything. This is the initial setup. Page three, JPEG again. Image quality settings, have it like that. Aspect ratio again, have it like that. Video, I think I've set it to 4K 100 frames per second. Movie settings, again, we're not doing these on this. APS-C, that's if you use an APS-C lens. Nothing else on that one. Okay, page four, high, high ISO noise reduction. Leave that set to off. Still image off. Color space, sRGB. You may want to go to the other one, Adobe RGB. Lens compensation. Not necessary if you're using Sony native glass. Format button, media settings, recovery of image, we'll leave all that as it is. Page six, we'll leave alone. Again, you could set your serial number. Next, okay, page seven, important page, page seven. Camera set memory, this is when you set all your controls, you can set it and memory recall which card you can uh, record a card with your memory settings on so you use that in that case and this is the important button on this page regular customer shoot set recall custom hold here we set what we want to recall on this button here so this essentially is our perch bird setting. So we go down and anything I mean you could just check three or four boxes on this. But the choice is yours, what you have set. Anyway, these are my settings as you can see. So you can set those if you want, or you can set your own. The most important thing is when you have set them all, come down to the bottom of the page and register. Okay, page eight, continuous shooting speed. Obvious if you want the high speed. Self timer, I put it to two seconds. You can change it like so. Bracket settings, mainly for landscapes, interval shoot function, pixel shoot mode, again I'd suggest largely for landscapes, set very still on a tripod. 
Page 9, silent mode shooting. Normally I would set this to silent, but as it's a new camera, I've left the audio signals on so that we get used to a verbal, a noisy click, because otherwise we could shoot off thousands of frames without even realising it with this camera. Electronic shutter, of course, to obtain the uh, number of frames. Disable, disable, anti-flicker. Whoops, on my... <coughs> steady shot, on. Steady shot, adjust, auto. Not doing this, we haven't got a zoom lens on. Grid line display, again, this is where you can set that. ISO. ISO Auto. We will be changing the range limit, but not on the initial setup. Exposure compensation. That's the actual value. Metering mode, multi metering. Spot metering point center. A This is important, this is on, that sets the back button focusing. 16, flash, we can whiz through all this, because at some point we will use the flash, but not on this occasion. White balance, always set to auto, shooting in raw, it can always be changed. These are creative look settings, don't do that. Zebra display, that's to do with focusing, which you can use to uh, manual focus very accurately, but not today. Page 20, here we have <coughs> balanced out emphasis. We don't really use AFS on the settings, so we stick to AFC. And you must set that to release. Tracking responsiveness. This is how sensitive you want the tracking to be. We have it set to 5 on Commander Light. But you might want it on a lower setting. AF illuminator off. That's the light important to us that comes on at the front of the camera to help with the auto focusing we want that off focus priority off off page 21 zone focus focus area limit this is one that you choose individual boxes to select your focus area limit and this is set to the C2 button. This is what chooses in focus area limit. So set this one. AF point and area focus area. So we want to uh, put those two the same. Focus area color red. It can be red or white. Um, suggest red. It just shows up easier. Autofocus registration off from this case. Off, nothing there. Off. Okay. So I'm just running through quickly here. I'm going to get disturbed soon. So AFC area display on. Phase detect off. Circle of focus per does not circulate on this one. Air frame movement standard. So these are all original settings, these are all starting second settings. I face I priority F on Oh the all important bird I autofocus. So yeah, make sure we've got it on bird. And um, I can assure you it does work very well. 
subject initial setting. I just start with all these settings. Auto magnify and magnify, that's a lovely setting. Okay, just put that on. You'll see what happens. No limit. Just set it according to those. You won't go too far wrong. Picking display, we're not doing that at the moment. To be set later. Selected playback media slot one. Yeah. In a large image. Standard position. Protect rating thing. So we're not doing any of this. The delete button is an absolute delight. Um, delete by pressing the delete button twice. You'll see what it is. Just leave it on. Fantastic feature. Just don't hit the delete button twice by mistake. Crop, rotate, copy. No, stick to JPEG. Don't know what the hyph is. Continue play interval. Yeah, just the standard playback modes. Playback. Yep. Yeah. Set all this like this. Oh, I tried to connect the smartphone. It did. But um, again, we're not really bothered about any of those. No. Go through all that. Bluetooth off. Dress setting. No, I don't want any of that. Airplane mode off. I think sometimes I do set the airplane mode in order to save power, but I um, haven't done it yet. It does use more power, this camera. I'll say that now. All self explanatory. Right, custom key setting. This is where we set recall custom hold button. We set this button to recall the settings in custom hold. So now with this set, we can recall the settings that we set earlier on page seven. So just remember page seven and page 42. Okay, that's how we recall our settings. Page 44. Touch operation on, that's the ability to touch the back of the screen. So I've got to go quickly over these. Always a display modes. Auto monitor off. Okay, nearly there. Page 49. Volume settings. Audio monitoring. Audio signals. Page 50. Page 52. Last one. And that just tells me what version we've got of the firmware. And there we are. So that's how the camera is set for our A1 flight bird settings and static settings. So if you can follow through all that and set it the same, you will have Camilla and I settings.
Yeah, just to show you the eye autofocus. Works on zoom on this picture. Works on that picture. Doesn't work on this picture because the bird, in effect, is too far away. Yeah, so whenever you're setting up, it's uh, setting up a new camera, make sure you sit down and uh, have got at least a couple of hours spare, which of course I haven't. But anyway, we'll see how we get on. I'll tell you what, I'll do the easy part first. And um, do you know what the easy part is? Easy part is sticking these bits on here. And um, it's got sort of nice wings actually. I must admit this is a, uh, a little improvement. These things don't flap around, don't make a noise. So that's a bonus. Well, I've done that. Just a little feature on there. Anyway, these um, straps going on here are for the uh, Peak Design camera strap. So a uh, little accessory that goes on there. And then of course the A1 takes the new um, CF Express card, which um, is whoops, one of these here, um, the brand new card type, um, very expensive, and um, yeah, anyway, to get the full features out of it, I think you need one of these, and um, I've taken this one out of the A92, which is the old memory card style, and that goes in slot... Uh, like so. Yeah, that seemed to fit. And then this one, so I never slotted one of these in before, but I think it goes in in a very similar fashion. See the uh, markings on that. And hopefully that just fits in. Oh shit. Oh shit. I've got the wrong card. It don't fit at all. <laughs> you Wally. Never mind. We'll start again. Wow. What an embarrassment. And, um, yeah, what a mistake to make. That's why we do this on Camilla and I. So that Camilla and I make the mistakes. I, myself, I make mistakes. I ordered a Type B CF Express card. Gah! Didn't know they were that advanced. They obviously went to B before they had A. Apparently that's what they did when I rang up Wex Photo Video. Anyway, marvellous service from Wex. A 30 day guarantee return. Ooh, so um, beautiful. Not only that, they're going to drop off the correct card, a Type A card. So uh, make sure you buy a Type A CF Express card for your Sony A1. And when they drop off the other card, they're going to pick up the old one and return it. Absolutely brilliant service. Obviously you had to pay for the other one as well. So we're currently down a few hundred pounds. But they will, once they get this safely in their mitts, be putting the money back in my bank account for totally my fault and charging me £10 for my total stupidity. So uh, yeah, there we are. Anyway, good point. <laughs>